Hi, my name's Alex Walford, I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video, I wanna show you how you can use a honeypot to detect intruders on your network. Um, so I have set this up, um, I've set up a cowrie honeypot. Uh, this is written in Python, it's open source, and uh, it's very well documented, it's popular. Um, it's an SSH honeypot, there are different types of honeypots, so, you know, some people um, want to, like, you know, monitor people trying to break into databases. Well, this is SSH, people trying to break into Linux boxes on your network. Um, so in this case, I have a hypothetical uh, hacker from the uh, Scottish uh, cyber terrorist group, a wee bit dodgy. Um, so um, that, that's him, he's gonna log into this honeypot. They, this honeypot is going to track all his actions um, using Elastic's file beat. And, and this is going to tail the log files, it's gonna handle when the log files roll, which is super handy, and, and write that out to a Kafka topic. Um, once it's in Kafka, look, we've got a Confluent Control Center here that has integrations for Slack and PagerDuty. Um, so that's it. This is uh, gonna catch people on your network. Um, bad guys. So let's uh, have a quick look um, and and see what I had to do to set this up. So the first thing I had to do was tweak um, the SSH uh, configuration on on the um, the host that's running uh, Cowrie. So let's let's have a quick look at that. We'll we'll SSH into here. SSH into Cowrie.Wolford.io and Let's just see, look, port. If I look at the port here, um, it will usually be on port 22. Now, people, um, I need to have my, my honeypot listening on port 22, so I had to move the real SSH off onto another port, and uh, that um, needed a little fiddling around to make it work. So look, I'm using SE Linux, and um, so I, I ran this um, SE manage uh, command, which is going to uh, allow um, uh, SSH to listen on a different port. So look, here we've got SSH. Usually that would just be 22, but I added 2222 um, so it can listen on that higher port, and then I move it off, and so now 22 is open. Um, now this um, honeypot is running um, as a, uh, uh, a cowrie user, not the root user. That would be a terrible idea. So look, um, because the cowrie user is not a privileged user, we need to uh, run this command, this setcap command, um, which is going to allow um, cowrie to bind to port 22. Um, so this is, um, th there are other ways of, of doing this, but this seems to be sort of the most modern way of getting um, a non-privileged uh, service to bind to a privileged port. So now let's have a quick look at uh, FileBeat and you can see um, how this works. So if I, if I cat this uh, out, look, I have inputs and an output. Very, very simple. So I'm gonna, I'm going to, um, this is a log file. Um, it, it's enabled to actually tail the log file. And, and look at this path. And um, so this is where the, the JSON file um, is created. And then simply just write the, the, the messages out to a Kafka topic, that's it. That's all we need to do to tail a file. Now I have this running as a service. When you install it, it, it will install as a service. And uh, yeah, so you put your configuration in this file B YAML file. Okay, what else have we got here? Let's see. Um, so um, one thing that I think is kind of noteworthy about this, there's something called uh, Harvester in uh, FileBeat. This is kind of a fiddly little detail, but I think it's kind of interesting. So a Harvester is something that tails the file, and if that file gets renamed, the Harvester goes with it, and a new Harvester will be launched on the uh, the, the new file. Um, and this this handles like uh, you know rolling the logs. It's great. Um, yeah, so um, there's there's a couple of things that I wanted to touch on. So once the data's in Kafka, um, we have a pager duty um, alert that gets triggered and a uh, webhook um, that, that gets called for Slack. So I, I wanna show you how those work very quickly. So um, first things first, let's trigger this thing. So I'm gonna log into some other host uh, here. Um, so I'm going to go to 
my host Deep Thought. Log into Cowrie from this other host. Um, so I'm I'm on another host. I'm going to SSH into cowrie.wolford.io, and it's going to ask me for the password. So I'm going to blah blah. And it lets me in. Look, it looks like I'm in this box. I can do like an LS, ALH or something. I can I can poke around. I can uh, I can do things. Uh, PSEF. It feels like it's a running environment, but it's not. In fact, if we pop over to the source code, uh, this this is the Cowry project. You can download this. You can make it look like your environment. So in this case, look, we have this file MOTD message of the day. This is what gets displayed when you log into the Linux box. So you should probably look at your own environment, take, the, customize it so it, it looks, it blends, it looks like it's um, any one of your your other Linux hosts. But anyway, these are these are the sort of files. This Honey FS Honey file system. Um, so that's how that works. And um, yeah, so now we're we're in this um, the, the the Honey pot. We we did something, and uh, this will be written to Kafka. So let's um, have a quick, quick look. Oh yeah, so these are the messages being written to Kafka. I'll give you an example of, of what one of these looks like. So if I pop over to my, my sample message, look, this is the, uh, uh, that someone logged in as root and it captures the password and the host is really useful. And, and oh yeah, so look, this is my pager duty, sorry, my um, uh, Slack integration uh, just came through here. Oh yeah, my phone just went off. Um, this is uh, an alert from uh, PagerDuty. So I've got Slack, I've got PagerDuty on my, my phone right here. Let's have a look and see what we had to do to set those up. It's really pretty simple. Um, so in this case, look, I, I went to um, alerts in Control Center. Um, I set up a trigger. So my trigger is called Cowrie. And, and what I've said here is look at this topic. This topic that is called Cowrie. If the bytes in is greater than zero, um, that means someone logged into the honeypot. There's been something written to that topic, and there shouldn't be, right? No one should be logging into the honeypot um, under normal circumstances. So, so um, this is the trigger. So once we've got a trigger, um, we can have actions based on those triggers. So first of all, let's have a look at Slack. And, and there's this handy generate in incoming uh, webhook uh, link here. So if you open this thing up, um, it will um, show you what you need to do. But basically, look, you create an app. Um, I already have one. Um, so you, you give your app a name. And once you've got, once you've got your app, uh, you can say, look, incoming webhook, create a new webhook. And um, basically, you'll take this URL and you'll, you'll, you'll put it inside of Control Center right here. And once you've done that, this will allow uh, Confluent Control Center to write to Slack. So that's how that works. Same kind of idea with PagerDuty, right? I have this other thing. I've set a frequency of, of alarms. So I don't want to be inundated every time someone types a command. Just tell me, you know, I've got an intruder, and then I'll, I'll uh, take it from there. So look. Here's PagerDuty. Same kind of idea. We have a routing key. So when you log into PagerDuty, um, you need to set up a service for this. So I think, I, what did I do? I went to Configuration uh, Services, and I added a uh, service. Um, so uh, where, where's like new service? And basically, it's going to give me uh, this um, uh, key. Um, which I'm going to stick in a configuration in uh, Confluent Control Center. So, yeah. Anyway, you can see that this has been uh, triggered. I need to acknowledge it. Um, and anyway, it's in pager duty. So I hope that was helpful. That that shows a, a sort of end-to-end -end flow of um, setting up a honeypot getting the data out of the honeypot into Kafka, monitoring it with Control Center, and uh, letting your uh, security people know that there's bad guys on the network, then you can figure out what they're doing and um, take uh, appropriate actions. All right, I hope that was interesting. Thanks so much for watching.